Hello and welcome to Prory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Kitty Hawk's new release of uh, helicopter kits. This is the SH-60B, the SH-60F, and I think we've got the MH-60S. So basically it's the navalized uh, Black Hawk version, or the Navy versions of it. Now I'll be honest with you, I've been really, really wanting this kit. This is one of those ones where, you know, we've we've seen other versions of it from other manufacturers, but in 135th scale, there's just something very iconic about this. And to be honest with you, many years ago, you might remember, I reviewed the Black Hawk, which was bang up to date, really very, very nice and all the rest of it. And I thought this was gonna be right on its heels. So I never built the Black Hawk, so I always wanted to build this particular one. Lo and behold, COVID, all the usual things that dropped in the way and Kitty Hawk's release schedule can be a little bit iffy, shall we say. So consequently, we've been waiting for ages for these to come out and then lo and behold, all three drop at the same time. So talk about spoilt. But anyway, what we've got here is the 135th scale uh, sort of Seahawk versions of this one right the way through. Technically, they're pretty much very, very similar and they're very similar obviously to the Black Hawk with a few notable differences. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take the SH-60B as sort of the benchmark for all three three of these. Now I am acutely aware that obviously the MH60 is more akin to the normal Black Hawk uh, review that we did. So what I'm going to do is I'll link that down below. We'll take the SH60B, do a review of that and then obviously we've got just the subtle differences between all four kits at the end of the day. So let's get on with it. Okay, so here we have the SH-60B, uh, obviously a very, very iconic aircraft, pretty much the navalized version of the Black Hawk. The biggest difference, obviously, easy to one spot, is the gear. Instead of it being down here at the tail, it's obviously on the back of the fuselage system here to give it a lower uh, footprint area for obviously naval work. Obviously carrying torpedoes, the usual thing, anti-submarine warfare, all the rest of it, but it's the same. Moving around on the box to have a good look around on here, you can see we've actually got some of the details there. So kit number for this one is KH50009. Okay, we've got a bit on here. And uh, what also we've got on these is unbelievable markings. They are absolutely fantastic. So we've got the Warlords down there, we've got the Seahawks, we've also got a Spanish Navy one, which is quite nice. We've got the one over here, that traditional uh, one from the Lamps ones. We've got the Wolf Pack and we've got the Battle Cat up here. And then over here, as we can see, we have Fly Painter Girl. If you haven't seen her stuff, have a look at her Facebook, just put, put her in and you'll see that she did a lot of the artwork. Obviously the Naval, she's done Air Force stuff, all the bits and pieces and again apparently they've worked closely with her to get the decals correctly to her paintings and stuff like that we can only hope that that's true okay but there we go so very very nice indeed so in the box if it's like it's bread bins, it'll be a pain to get into there we go we're in Okay, so down in here we can see we've got an absolute stuffed box full of it. So we've got our instructions as our usual thing. We've got uh, a box here which has, if we can dive into it, our clear parts. So we've got our clear parts, nicely separate package, keeping them safe, which is very nice indeed. We've got the various screws, so obviously it's fuselage, one of the biggest differences. And we've obviously got more sprues, as you can imagine, sprue after sprue after sprue. We've got some more clear parts down in here as well, which are not separately boxed. That's random. Okay, and then obviously we are in, as you can imagine, to tons and tons of sprues. You certainly will get your money out of this kit, trust me. So we've got, obviously we've got the blades there. We've got more blades. So you've got engine detail and obviously weapons, depending on obviously the versions you're doing. And the really interesting bit is going to be these with these amazing markings, as we can see, which look absolutely gorgeous. But as always, we will start in the instructions and we'll work our way through. Okay, so usual thing, it'll probably be in this amongst about them all in here with the markings somehow, or well, sort of. Okay, so again, you've got this one down in here. Very nice in that sort of classic uh, with the white tops and then the grey underneath, okay? And then obviously going right into this one, sprue callouts, all the rest of it. We've got the photo etch and those fantastic markings. But usual thing, starting off in the cabin, adding all the details in there. So you've got the seats going in there, the centre console, all the actual electronics gear and surveillance equipment and things like that going down into the back of this one. 
all the cabin details as you can imagine going right the way through we've got the sonar boy array system being fitted into that one as well and then obviously you've got your cockpit your cabin pedals usual bits and pieces you might imagine down in there so you're making a cabin within a cabin section as well so you've got beautiful detail right the way through and then all the parts as you can see so this cabin basically builds into a section down in here okay then we're into the engine, so we've got some nice detailed engines if you fancy having a, a little bit of a go at that. So we've got all your engines going down in there, all the exhaust being fitted on and your intakes. And then working our ride the three through for the rotor head. Um, it has been mentioned to me uh, by uh, John, who's building this one at the moment, that you do have to take a little bit of care about the rotor head on the various ones of these because some of the call outs are incorrect and some of the parts need to be changed over. Okay, so that's just something that he spotted whilst he's been building his one. Okay, and then obviously engines being fitted in, and again, you're back to the markings, which you can see they are beautiful markings as we can see down in here. So the Battle Cats with that famous tail with the cat's eyes on it, absolutely lovely. Beautiful aircraft. And then the Warlords obviously with the sun, with the, the Japanese type style markings onto those. Okay, so up the top, uh, obviously at the engine area, things like that, all being fitted right the way through. And the intake's being fitted onto that one. And then again, down in here, we've actually got the uh, rotor head, which doesn't look like it does fold. I thought one of these folded up, but we will check that in a minute. Okay, and then opening up the holes, obviously there's lots of uh, different versions of this kit coming out there, so just pay attention to which holes you are opening up, and perhaps even holes you may be filling. Okay, and then obviously fuselage halves and trying to get that cabin in there, tailwheel obviously being fitted into that one as well, going in there, glass work being fitted, and then it's just going to be a case of adding all the details, of which there is numerous for all the sensors uh, being fitted to the outside, so I've got lots of those being fitted on there, one we've got the flare camera being fitted down onto that, and and then obviously we've got the pylon for the actual torpedo uh, and for the sensor array and then obviously we've got the doors and various things being all fitted in as you can imagine right the way through on this one next up we've got down the back here so obviously that's the one for the uh, sonar array being fitted onto this one so that goes down there at the back main gear being fitted onto this one and then the tail on here so I'm taking it the tail is a brake system so you can have it displayed open or closed although it doesn't seem to mention it too much so you have got differences in here obviously which it's talking about but uh, it's not making that much out of it that is pointing it out that it can be folded but I'm sure it can be okay just the way it goes together that entire rotor head assembly and all the rest of it with the engines and everything being fitted onto the roof of the actual cabin and then uh, onto here, you're assuming you can have them obviously in the open or closed position and have more detail at the front, but there's none in there, unfortunately. Now we're into where it's talking about folding up. Again, it's a little bit of a thing about the instructions. It's not showing it clearly how it all goes. It's sort of taking it that you know how it goes, which is a little bit of a thing. So I'm assuming references are going to be key to this. Get some good references about how you're going to be displaying this one going right the way through. And then obviously we've got the torpedo being fitted on and the fuel tank. And then obviously you have your finished assembly. And then more on the back just like that. That is complicated okay uh, and again a little bit about wary about with the rotor head it's a bit like and there you go so again it might be worth uh, either following somebody else's build or getting some good references and a lot of test fitting to make sure how that all goes so down in here you would think and again, I can't 100% swear to this, this isn't my kits. These are actually uh, John's kits that he's lent me for the review. But you would think they would have a lot of protection, which they do. These have a clear sheet on these, which I was hoping for, because again, it looks like they're just a sort of an afterthought with this one. But to be honest, they look very nice. Good, clean printing. Obviously, you have to check your typos and all the rest of it, because they are sort of prone to them. But you can see, amazing, good, high quality decals and obviously they do tend to print theirs as in dot printing instead of silk screen but to be honest with you they look pretty good they do look very very nice decals on those ones so I can't see any particular graininess in them or anything else like that so from that point of view as I say when you look at them on the close-up they look pretty good no problem with those at all and then as you say we've got these ones here we just sort of always up as you can see actually they all look pretty good no real problems that I can see just glancing at these and that doesn't look too bad at all 
Okay, let's try and shoehorn them back in the bag. Okay, we do get a little bit of photo etch like we said before. Okay, so again, just got a few bits and pieces down in here on that. Try not glare the camera for the harnesses. Not too much photo etch, to be honest. I thought there might be a little bit more in there because, again, there's lots of detail parts, but I'm sure the aftermarket people will be along with this one. Right, okay, let's start with a bit everybody wants to see. As I say, we have bags and bags on bags. So, big old review today. So, down in here, we have, I'm just going to try and keep this somewhat together. We have, as you can see, the fuselage sections like this. See, there's a big old lump of this. And a bit like, obviously, we saw with the Black Hawk, we have this fantastic detail on here. But if you run your finger over it, you can feel, and then back here, you probably see it, we've got the actual injection ports. So these need to be sanded off because they're a bit gnarly. And again, you just have to go around and find where they are. Okay, because there's a lot of detail going under here. And again, you can see all this surface detail there's lots of it and the problem has always been all of this underneath as you can see you've got all of this and it's a nice flat line so getting in here for a perfect bead of making it nice and everything else is like it's worth spending a little bit of time just on this underside section to make sure it's all right okay but again generally no real problems at all it all looks very nice you can see over here and then down under there beautifully done Okay, no real problems that I can spot just off the back looking in. Internally, there's nothing apart from loads of holes to open up. Okay, down the back here, we've got a little bit for the tail. Again, some of these are going to be specific. I'm just looking at some of these, the way they're done and in there. They look a little bit crinkly, and there's a little bit of flash on the odd parts down in here, the way this goes, but it seems to be nice. The plastic is that hard plastic that I actually quite like as well. The tail... As you can see in here, again, loads of surface detail on this, which again, being naval is great because you think of the weathering possibilities you could do with this. And then obviously this is the brake section in there. So we've got a nice little bit of detail showing in those as well. So that'd be quite nice. And then obviously we've got the plugins for the actual uh, tail rotor drive coming in, sort of the male and female sides of it as well. So yeah, that looks quite nice. I think we're gonna have to pop these down in here. Okay, so where the hell do you begin? Let's try and do it in sort of somewhat reverse order. I'm going to turn that upside down. Okay, so down in here. I'll just pop these in. We'll do them one at a time. Okay, so as you can see, busy old sprues with this. Loads and loads of detail and stuff, as we can see, going right the way through. So where to start? So up on here. We've actually got around the rotor head area, we've got the intakes, we've got the swash plate, the various bits and pieces are down here for the rotor head to make our way across. So we've got nice details on the rotor head, we've got the air intakes, and imagine loads of parts, we've got the diffuser, say more rotor head type bits down in here. Some of this is obviously used, some of it's not. So down in here we've got the refueling boom. Um, obviously we do have generic parts in this for all the ones but generally the details are all very nice you can see down in here the actual raised rivets with obviously recessed details things like that so it's a really nice mix of both and again on the blind side doesn't look too bad we haven't got any massive ejector pins they all seem to be quite flush which is getting nice okay no problems at all with any of that okay okay into the next one so, as we can see it down in here on Sprue uh, HD, I think they call it. Okay, as you can see, busy sprues on these. Very, very nice. But again, the detail is all here. Okay, the locating joints are actually quite small to the actual parts, which is quite a nice touch. But again, you've got this nice mixture of raised details and recessed details right the way over it. Okay, and again, you know, we're just going to run through these sprues. Some of them obviously are not going to be used on this particular version. Okay, but it may be on the other versions as we know. So again, various things. So this little guy down in here, we're assuming with this rotor head is because of the different types of rotor head in the perhaps the folded and the non-folded versions, things like that. Okay. So again, just being a little bit mindful when you're putting this together, perhaps have a plan of action, uh, do a plan of the build. So you make sure you use all the right parts. 
just obviously Kitty Hawk are trying to get as much out of their mould as they possibly can with all the different versions. So uh, we can't blame them in this day and age with the Costa kits, it's a way of doing it. So HC, again, loads of different parts on this sprue, as you can see, some really nice stuff. So again, if we have a, a wander round, we've got cabin details. Uh, this is definitely one for us because it's got the, uh, sure, I think these are fueling areas that run to the rear uh, and things like that. So again, very nice. That's ceiling details running around the front. Okay, obviously we've got the torpedo pylons there and obviously we've got the uh, sort of sonar boy one at the back as well for the towed array. Obviously we've got the station here for the weapons officer, things like that. Again, looking all very nice indeed. Okay, so we've got this one down here, which again has got your sonar type equipment radar things like that so the big old radome under here for the radar and then obviously working around with your other bits so again if we have a flash around to be honest it all looks very nice all the parts seem very clean very crisp can't really fault anything like that so we've got the doors all the small parts everything seems quite nice on here so we've also got your sonar voice on the outside and then you've got your tubes for the inside and then the wiring for the rears okay so yeah, actually I have to say, it's looking very, very nice. Some good details in this. Well done, Kitty Hawk. I was hoping it was going to be a good kit, and I'm not disappointed. Okay, so. So, 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 we have up next. So basically we've got the floor. I think this is more of a general one here. So where does that actually say? There we go. We have it the right way around. Okay. So again, looks pretty good all the rest of it good starting points and again we've got a little bit of sort of blindside wiring as well uh, on the backs i think of the instrument panels things like that we've got beautiful details down in here for raised and then we've got roof which again i don't think that's the roof we're using but i'll say cabin floor i think will be general will be the same for both of them and various bits on here but again some of this i think this is just generally the black hawk version so again being mindful that we might have a different sprue for our one, but some of it obviously will be general. Okay, so down in here, to be honest, I well, I'll tell you what we will. We'll do a full review. I'm gonna say, I don't know if we need to get these out and show, but I think what we will, we'll get one out. So obviously we've got a mixed pair here. Okay, so down in here in E, which again, I think we're back to general Blackhawk stuff. So we've got actually the rotors, we've got the wheels and tires, the various areas down into this one, some of the seats, the usual things that you might expect in a standard type Black Hawk, perhaps not so much ours. The rotors look pretty good, nicely detailed. And again, this is more seats and things like that. So again, I'm imagining this is probably general Black Hawk stuff because again, with this one, which I do assume may be slightly different. Perhaps this is more our naval one because we do have Needly bits in here, so if we can get one out, there we go. So we've got torpedoes, different types of rotors on this one, different seats and various things. So I'm thinking that maybe this is more of a the naval one. So again, looking around at all the smaller parts, looking all nice. We've got some of the seats there, tail wheel, tail, I should think, uh, the way that is, one piece. Some more of the smaller stuff. We've got a gun, various things. But over here, obviously, we've got the uh, torpedo and the fuel tank and again we've got a pair of these as well for uh, both sides and stuff like that so I'm imagining that's where we're going with this so that looks pretty nice this one over here we've definitely seen before this is the standard one that we saw for the other review so we're not going to worry about too much going through this one so we've got the engine details we've got the ammunition but again we've got rocket pods down in here uh, and obviously with the guns hellfire missiles this is the generic one uh, which is pretty much, I think, standard with the, uh, the both kits, okay? Or all the kits. Right, so last up, we've got the clear parts. So again, funny you get one lot in a box, the other lot you don't. So again, this is obviously specific to the Seahawk version because we've got slightly different doors on these, uh, if I mention rightly, and we've got various, the windows are slightly different. So as you can see on the close-up, they are 
gorgeous it's flat so we wouldn't expect anything else but technically we've got no blemishes no marks nothing whatsoever on that one we've got the FLIR sensor pod under here probably that will be for the MH60S okay so again somewhat generic with this three kits okay and this is our generic one which we'll have a quick look see down in here again shame it's not boxed but again this is the one for the standard Black Hawk, and as you can see on here, it's got slightly different doors from the naval version, which have the sort of the scoop into them. So that's the thing with that. But again, the windscreen will be the same. Okay, and a few of the other little windows will be exactly the same in lights, hence that's why you're getting it in that kit. There you have it. To be honest with you, I've been a big fan of these ones because again, it's nice to have a 35th scale, that's basic, Hawk in whichever one. If it's the Black Hawk, the Sea Hawk, we've got the Night Hawk, whichever Hawk you want, Ocean Hawk, we've got them all here now. Now, as I said, um, I know a couple of people are putting these together and I've found, I'll be honest with you, that standard thing for Kitty Hawk, it's almost like they rushed the kit. Kitty Hawk, I know you don't listen to a word I say, but honestly, I am a massive fan of your kits as you know and you're getting better with every single release. Some of the ones in the early days, nowadays they're very, very good, but please, 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 can we have slightly more easy to understand instructions and can we make sure those instructions are followable? Because I do know the guys have been talking to me saying the rotor head is a little bit of a mess because this one doesn't fold, if I remember rightly, but the others do. And again, why doesn't that one? But then we imagine that's more like the standard Black Hawk version than these ones obviously being the Seahawk versions and stuff like that. But again, it's one of those ones where buyer beware and just take your time and understand that it has got problems with the instructions. And this is what we're saying. If you go through and you actually have an idea that you know perhaps this doesn't look right assume it's not right uh, and have a look to see how it can be right because sometimes all the parts and all the bits are there it's just the instructions are wrong or it may be perhaps something needs rotating 180 degrees like a certain rotor or something else like that and again it's just little things like that where if the kits I think sometimes get a little bit pushed out the door perhaps a little bit rushed a little bit more time perhaps get a few modelers to build them take the feedback to work on that feedback you know appreciate that it's constructive crit uh, criticism because that's definitely what i'm giving you now uh is to own a way of actually fix that problem and go through it as i said i've built quite a few kitty hawks now and every single one's just had some funny little thing in it which is an easy fix but it shouldn't really be there Anyway, there we go. That is the Kitty Hawks range of Navy uh, Seahawks. So what you've got up here is obviously you've got the Ocean Hawk, we've got the Night Hawk, or obviously we've got the Seahawk up here as well with the different versions of them. They are going to have subtle differences because obviously the Ocean Hawk doesn't have the uh, uh, sonar stuff and all the various bits and pieces, but it does have the radar underneath and again, various ones to it. The Night Hawk is obviously the, the fully armed version of it with the pylons and the bits and pieces and the FLIR cameras and all those things things so again slightly different versions but generally that's what you're going to get out of the box with them all with the different versions in there so anyway a great kit by kitty hawk 135th scale seahawk family <laughs>